the Potomac Ballroom, you have to walk past the main entrance, and then you have to walk past Radio Row, which is where every one of the the accredited media organizations is doing interviews with all the other attendees. And so you're walking in this very narrow corridor with all of these people who are all talking. They're all part of this media hive. Uh, and everything was too loud. And the faces were like coming right at me and they would just be crystal and clear for a second. And they honest, swear to God, they all looked like they were going to start biting me like that. I, I, I had what Hunter Thompson called the fear. I actually had it. Like I said, I remember when we went to the, when I went to the RNC, I said that everybody looked like they were from a Ralph Stedman painting, but I actually felt in that moment, like I was inside a Ralph Stedman so drawing. Matt was getting the fear and I was like, Matt, like, let, let me get you some water. Like, it'll be okay. Like here, here's here, have some water, dude. It'll be fine. So he was like, this is no good. It feels bad. Then it was going like straight down into the valley. Yeah. Then whoosh, whisked right back up I on a gondola earned i earned it after feeling like and i swear to god i felt like i was in the amazon and they were piranhas and they were going to just strip my fucking bones in a second i was genuinely terrified but then a beautiful golden boy saved me i'm talking about the unofficial off the cuff punk rock jacob wall Jack Berkman and Laura Loomer press conference. Wow. That so was... the Virgil by this one had, fi- had joined us. So the whole team was assembled for this like um, ad hoc press conference because I guess Jacob and Jack weren't given credentials to CPAC. Laura was, but we'll get to the funny, uh, the funny <laughs> turn on that in a little bit. Again, and we were too. We were. Yeah. But, uh, to just put a point on this. Uh, everybody emailed earlier to get credentials. I never got an email back from CPAC. Uh, giving me my credentials and I just walked into the media room at the day and was like uh, can I please have credentials I'm with these guys and they were like yeah here you go so, <laughs> so uh, th- it, that's how easy it is to get so you remember how I told you how like in the Gaylord Convention Center is like this gigantic like glass atrium that's like eight stories high and we were on like the sun just pouring in and, and Jacob led us to basically like a, the, the edge of a cliff yeah Looking over like yeah, this, this fake eerie. village. We were all yes. Us. We were the A Ryrie. Everybody who wanted to to see the Jacob thing was sort of milling around in this area, and no one knew exactly where it was going to be because there's a million places it could be technically called the lobby. So we didn't want to miss it. And I figured he's gonna he, he's only doing this for the press. He's not going to start doing it if nobody's there. He's going to find us. And sure enough, eventually he came into the lobby and he just Pied Piper of Hamlin style just leads us all onto this this outcropping area. W- where the atrium is, yes, that's all the sun pouring in. It's, it was dappled as fuck. We were dappled. We were man. dappled up. So Jacob, Jack, Jack Bergman, Bergman, Laura Loomer there to give, in their words, the event of CPAC, the most barn a bombshell. Party. Like this is like the bombshell. This is what's going to make headlines. This is what's going to make news. Uh, he he delivered it to us and literally sixes of other people, um, <laughs> all of whom were hostile press there to laugh at. Him. Yeah. Every single person. This was just this was a comedy performance. Yeah, so, every every other like actual earnest attendee was like, you know, fucking they were watching like Rick Perry talk about the future of coal yeah. or something. They were not watching this shit. So we get there, he immediately hands out in what he is calling a confidential report. I have, I'm holding it in my hand right now. It is literally like five pages stapled together, just Times New Roman 12 point font looks like something you would give in to like a class you were trying to get a C in your freshman year of college. They're just not really putting in much effort. Yeah, there's pictures in it. Yeah, it says confidential report, investigation of representative Ilan Omar, February 2019. And then he's like, does everyone have a copy of this? And at the bottom of each page, it says privileged and strictly confidential. So this is the first thing we see. We remember you remember like last week they like them and uh, that Ali guy all went to Dinky Town. Ali was there, by the way. They all went to Dinky Town and got Dinky Burgers in Minneapolis. But like the Somali warlords who have taken over there stopped (laughs) doing it or something. So this is um, this is their investigation. And we we knew like I was like, this is going to be about how she married her brother. Right. Yeah. And lo and behold, that's exactly what it was about. Yeah, but the entire so he's like, yeah, he was giving the presentation from this dossier, which is in front of the moon door. By in front, the way. Right, he was at the moon door, and he's giving the presentation. 
like it his verbal presentation had like nothing to do with the document though it was just like you would momentarily look up and be able to make like hear him because of course he wasn't mic'd and people are yelling but when you did hear him he'd be like and you know as you know uh somalis have um an islamic style warlock in their community that helps them change faces and then you'd look back at the document and it would just be like poorly translated uh, Instagram screenshots. Okay, I, I want to read. Uh, this is from the document provided. Under uh, bold underline findings. The following findings are based on an extensive investigation, including forensic analysis, cyber intelligence, and in-person interviews with well-placed human sources. <laughs> And the cyber intelligence is literally just following on Instagram and doing screenshots. <laughs> and then mistranslating from whatever language, Somalia. I, I, I just like, again, like the whole thing was that um, she married her brother to get citizenship in America. Uh, can't say that, that, you know, there any anything too bulletproof was presented. It's going to be hard for the MSM to fucking ignore this one. But I got to say, if it is true, I think that owns and is awesome. Like yeah. if that if that's the fucking hustles you pulled to go from being in a refugee camp to in Congress in America doing yeah, good she, work, sure that's fucking more cool. Than the rest of you dumbass, yeah. la lazy motherfuckers. It's okay, like can we talk about Jack Berkman though? Jack Berkman was wearing the most dishonest outfit I've ever seen. He was wearing a pinstripe suit with a black turtleneck. Like, literally the outfit you wear when you're about to get beaten up for a gambling debt. He is like a candy-looking guy. He's got the hair. He's stepped out of a 1996 vivid porno video. Like, like, yeah. When he has sex, it is with saxophones in the background. The woman is wearing white pumps. She's got pearl necklace on. She's got crispy bangs. Felix, like, that's the only way it happens. Felix, you said, like, uh, Jack Burton was there, and he'd be like, uh, by the way, um, if you're here for my press conference uh, against my lawsuit against uh, Domino's Pizza, half hour free delivery, that'll be uh, later yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah, Berkman looks like, yeah. He just like it looks like he's just like the Catamary Damacy of lawsuits. <laughs> like he just rolls around the world and he's like, Domino's Pizza Tracker dishonest. Yeah, I'm getting on that. Uh, Ilan Omar married her brother. Getting on that. Uh, um, Robert Mueller raped a woman. Getting, getting on, on that. On that. Yeah. Uh, Black.com. Whatever. Getting on that. He's just but like he's, he's a lawsuit against Black.com for discriminating against hiring him as an ad porn. <laughs> yeah. And then next to them was Laura Loomer, who had oh a shirt boy. on that had her picture, like a drawing of her with tape over her mouth but the problem is that was like four looks and nose jobs ago yeah, so that, she looks that's completely the, that's different the thing about, that's the thing about Loomer that it's already a sign that you're unwell if you're wearing a t-shirt with your face on yeah, it bad not, sign. Very, not very many people can pull that off yeah. and, and convey uh, sanity or competence yeah uh, but her problem is, of course, that she seems to change her look once a week. Dude, she's a faceless woman. Laura Loomer is Arya Stark. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that just that heightens. That's like a new level of looking unwell. That you're wearing a shirt with your face on it that looks nothing like yeah, you anymore. Yeah, didn't look anything like her because she's blonde in the picture on her shirt, and she now has black hair. It's very confusing. And again, I, 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 I so in in this scrum, you know, over at the in the eerie, uh, overlooking the moon door. Uh, there's, like I said, sixes of people there, virtually all of them laughing. And I can't overstate how funny... I was this... crying. And here's the thing. I was a little bit like off to the side. I, I sort of separated from uh, Felix, Matt, and Virgil. And during this whole press conference, we're like, yeah, like Jacob Wall is presenting it just totally straight-faced, completely straight-faced. I look over, and you can hear it like while he's going on, and there's video clips of this where you can hear Felix talking about Game of Thrones, and Matt is just... Red faced, pouring sweat, <laughs> crying from laughing. Just get, like gales of laughter are coming out of him. Yeah, and like and like and, and we were like three feet away from them, so they could see and hear all of this. But again, just no phase, acknowledgement. Yeah, no nothing. acknowledgement. I'm just like so self con like when I'm totally alone, I'm like at my computer, I'm like no, I don't even have like a cam on. I'm not on Discord. I'm like, my hair looks like shit. I'm such a <laughs> fucking pussy. I hope I'm killed by a sniper across my balcony. And Jacob will like literally hears like 
people like basically screaming and a man out of his mind on acid crying laughing at him he hears me calling him young griff and his scumbag his scumbag for calling him uh john connington and he's like all going to plan no he has Keep a it going no, a perfect poker face no yeah. reaction no, really it's, impressive it's, it's actually pretty impressive. he's basically a robot when 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 uh when laura luber said that because they described half of it was complaining that Omar wouldn't talk with them, and I can't imagine why. why? Uh, but at one point, she says, and I, I went to Representative Omar. I loomered her. <laughs> That's and when she used, when she said she loomered her, I fucking, I was dead. I was outside of my body for a minute. No, yeah, I, I wasn't on any. Dr- I feel like I depersonalized in a good way. I feel like I spent the entire week in third person mode. <laughs> so I kind of, uh, I kind of felt bad because we're all there just <laughs> l- laughing and riffing and heckling them. And I thought, and, and we're surrounded by, you know, like a dozen or so journalists. And I thought, oh, are these guys mad because we're ruining their video? No, or they're all dying laughing. But no, they're also laughing and just <laughs> heckling them and just asking inane questions yeah, of yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, and that's when I realized what, you know, this this trio, this what the three musketeers do by going from town to town and putting on these press conferences. They're basically medieval jongleurs. They are, they are <laughs> circus actors. There, uh, because you know, uh, 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 all sorts of entertainment is uh, uh, entertainments are banned. Yeah, and the, the tumbling bear died. So they, have to, <laughs> they have to get these people, and then yeah, they just go around from village to village to enter to en- entertain the local, the small folk. Except in this case, the small folk, the only people who pay attention to them are journalists, because all yeah. their like online fans are housebound. No, that's the thing is that it was a totally self-contained experience. It was just it was entirely for the benefit of these journalists. It was not going to change anyone's mind. It's not going to penetrate the MC- MSM. Nobody but housebound boomers are even going to hear about it on Twitter. Uh, it's just for our benefit. And that's when I was I, I started to think that Jacob Wall must be some sort of transcendent comic genius and that this is actually the only good bit going on right now uh, of all the people trying to do bits because we're all kind of like late capitalism is just a giant improv class and we're all just doing bits for each other. Yep. Most of them suck because most improv is bad. A few of them are <laughs> decent. Some of more of them are okay. And, and a few are very good. I feel like he's the only one who's the best. He's the John fucking Belushi of late capitalism because he doesn't care how anybody sees him. All of us, we're bound by the fact that we have an audience that we want to reflect well on us. They want, we have an audience of people we want to think uh, that we're smart or funny or good people. Same thing for all the would-be carnival barkers on the right. They have an audience that they want to think that that they're good in some way. Jacob Walt does not care, and so it's just pure performance. And like at the end of it, they, so Will Summer asked him, "Hey, what about that thing where you said Robert Mueller raped that lady?" He goes, "Yeah, we're done with that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my old set. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I've got a new five minutes. Um, so my my honest my honest to God recommendation to you is that if 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 Wool and Loomer are coming to your town, do not miss that show. It's it's the funniest thing. It's you're like gonna see. it's like when the Sex Pistols played in Manchester for the first time. Yeah. You know, everyone not many people saw it, but everyone who did went on to form a band. Or the Velvet Underground. Uh, can we play the clip? I I did get the chance to ask the first question at the press conference. Can we play a clip of my 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 cue? All right, I want to open it up to questions from the from the press and the public. The public's free to ask questions as well. Confidential. Is it okay if I read it? <laughs> All right. Questions from the okay public or the press. Is it confidential? It's for release. And we're, it's and for release. It's for okay, release. This is hereby. This is hereby released. You can post it. And and by the way, we're answering questions about the report. It's confidential though. Is it okay if other people read it's, it? It's, go ahead, Will. It's for yeah, have either of you talked to the FBI or other law enforcement about the Mueller press conference? You know, we're so finished like, with that, and no, we haven't talked to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So, and then in between there, we leave the Wall press conference. We're going back to the Potomac Main Hall. Then we get the main event oh, of baby. Thursday, mm. and I got to say, like again, the contrast could not be more vivid. Yeah. Diamond and silk. Diamond oh and Silk. God. This is what we were really looking forward to. Diamond and Silk get out there, and I gotta stay fucking blew the doors off that. They place. killed it. They crushed. They crushed. It. Absolute crush. crush. They deserve every penny they got, double. Well, and certainly uh, Diamond deserves most. Of that it. okay? I'd never seen that. I've only seen them like on cable news or like brief clips of that. I've never actually seen them do like like a set. Yeah, and I had no idea Silk. Literally does nothing. Well, she's no, the she designated does. black lady because she has to like what they have to do black lady stuff. That's so, like, why they like Diamond them. does all the jokes and like all the like the zingers. And then all Silk does is just go, uh-huh. 
No, well, Silk's like the head writer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, that was so sick. That was so fucking sick. Like, I was so mad I was there after uh, the two speeches I'd seen previous. It was just, I went through like two jewel pods. <laughs> I was so fucking, I was watching Tifu on Twitch on my phone at full volume. <laughs> and I was just so fucking irritated. And then just, you know, I, I, I honestly thought, so we were in the back media pit, right? And you can't really see the front of the room. And judging by the reaction to the two speeches we had seen, I was like, there's got to be like no one here. They got to just be saving it till they can see like Trump or like Mark Levin. But when Diamond and Silk came out, it was like, oh, this place is packed. Yeah. Like I thought they were going to form a pit. Dude, yeah. no, they I, went I, nuts. I counted it. There was no fewer than a half dozen standing ovations for Diamond and Silk. Yep. And the thing is, is that you guys have never seen her before. I've seen them in person. Longtime listeners will know that when I went to the RNC in Cleveland in 2016 with Brian Quimby from Street Fight, we went to the Alex Jones rally that was held totally separate from the convention on a, in a little park next to the river. Uh, it was 95 degrees out. Milo was there. Alex Jones was there. Roger Stone was there. Uh, it was a cavalcade of goofum goof goof ups. Uh, and Diamond and Silk had a speech. And they... It was probably maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred rough looking InfoWars fans. And they didn't do that well. They bombed, right? They kind of bombed. I mean, nobody, I mean, only Alex Jones really got a big crowd and got them engaged. Superstar. Because uh, that's what people were there for. But uh, they, they did okay. The big problem was is that they would have like these set up punchline situations and the goofuses, the, the fucking hicks in the audience would yell into the, into the pauses and ruin the rhythm. And you could see them getting mad at them. Uh, so it was like it was okay, you know, a couple hundred Infowars fans, and now, boom, two and a half years later, at the same stage, the president will be on two days after them, packed room full of like millionaire scions and and fail sons going crazy for him. Like yeah, like you said, like you said it to me, and it was actually like it really hit me. Like nothing sums up the last two years more than you seeing them bomb ninety degrees in front of Cleveland's shitty river. Yeah. Um. Two years later. Headlining and the, last thing the, the marquee day. event of American conservatism on the same stage that Donald Trump himself and killing it, killing it, just they like destroyed. like it, it, we just I cannot like there were impromptu ch chairs. Oh, Felix, love this. At one point, uh, Diamond's going off and she says, just in the middle of her patter, goes socialism, and then someone randomly in the middle of the crowd just yells out, "Socks!" <laughs> yeah, this guy like. He gave his death yell to Diamond and Silk. That was his, he he died after that, that. In all week, and yeah. it was like it was his death rattle. Sucks. <laughs> yeah. like, and then like, and then Diamond was like, "That's right, honey." And then he died, and just his soul drifted off to heaven, perfectly. Like, yeah, like, he went yeah. to play a fucking, yeah. her, playing a fucking uh, harp. He went to conservative the hall. Like he's gonna live in a Ben Shapiro savage moment compilation <laughs> video. So. I'm trying to remember even like what the content of their set was. It's just like no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't hits. matter. Yeah, it was just like just like all the all the build hits. the wall, build the wall. They're gonna take your cows, they're gonna kill your babies. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. This is one. The one that I wrote down was he said, "It's all this talk about a green new deal. We need a new deal for babies." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crowd goes basic. insane. And here is what I don't understand. What don't you understand? <laughs> When an illegal alien come through that border illegally, the left advocates to help and support them. Uh-huh. But when an American baby comes through the birth canal legally, uh -huh. the left is advocating to kill them. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with, with that. that. That's right. I have a problem. problem with that girl. A problem is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With that. Uh huh. And I'm sorry, we don't need a Green New Deal. Uh huh. We need a new deal for our American babies. That's what right. we need. That's what we need. We need a new deal for American babies, which just made me imagine a bunch of little infants in civilian conservation corps hats <laughs> building a dam. In yeah. The oh my God! We then the business plot is done by the boss baby. <laughs> <laughs> we need we need to oh, we need to electrify the Tennessee Valley Birth Canal. <laughs> Dude, I mean, just yeah. like again, like uh, but, impromptu chance, standing <laughs> ovations. Uh, of course, grotesque. 
But I will say now, I would accept a writing job on Diamond and Silk Season 3. Yeah, if anyone's yeah. out there, I will take the head writing job for Diamond and Silk Season 3. It, it, honestly, seeing, I think we can do better. Them, seeing, seeing on the same day, within a few hours, uh, Jacob Wall and them, it really did make me feel like I was enjoying like an, the 80s during the, the height of, of stand-up comedy as an art form and seeing the two greatest exemplars of the opposing schools. It felt like Wall was vintage anti-comedy, Andy Kaufman, un- you know, just totally uh, principled, you know, uh, committed to the bit, anti-comedy. And then Diamond and Silk were raw era, leather suit, Eddie Murphy, theatrical released stand-up special. Just crushing it in front yeah, of like destroyed. a stadium of people. Yeah. Okay. So that about brings us to the end of the first day. Mm-hmm. 